Dean Grubbs, a world-renowned expert on the ecology of sharks, is on an 18-day research cruise. The team's mission is to catch deep ocean fish living near the site of the 2010 blowout. Oh, see bubbles. Got a critter coming. It's a thing of horror films. That's the king snake eel. They're only found in the Gulf of Mexico. That big king snake eel was only uh, described in 1980. You got him. Fish on. on this back. one's even bigger. Yeah, they're only in the Gulf and mostly only over here where you got the Mississippi River plume and all the sediment from the Mississippi, that silty sediment. That's what they like. This is Dean Grubb's 15th cruise since the spill. Seagra, Levinot. The information he and his team gather is critical to discovering the long-term impact of oil on the health of deep ocean animals. John Whalen is a PhD student at the University of North Florida. I'm going to look at molecules in their liver that increase in concentration after exposure to pollutants such as oil-related products. Bianca Prohaska is a PhD candidate studying biology at Florida State University. I take the whole blood and I spin it down in the centrifuge, and then I'm able to get the plasma, which separates from the red blood cells. Um, and that's what I'm going to look at and see what reproductive condition fish are in. And when all of the samples have been worked up, and all the data is logged in, there are still chores to be done. On a small vessel with a limited budget and crew, everyone chips in. No one is excused, no matter how many advanced degrees you have. After going nearly 24 hours nonstop, some team members try to catch a few winks of sleep. We do keep a pretty intense schedule out here and get maybe four hours of, I don't call it sleep because you're on a rolling ship. For folks that aren't used to it, it can be pretty rough on them their very first trip, but your body gets used to it. What happens next will really test the team's endurance and strength. Got a big fish, got a big fish, got a big six gill shark coming. Everyone rushes to the stern. It's extremely rare to see a live six-gilled shark. I bet she's a thousand pounds at least. We're gonna test that winch. Somebody hold that a second. She's almost too big for the stretcher. This is one of the world's largest sharks, and its appearance is similar to fossil sharks, dating back roughly 200 million years. Go out with the A-frame just a little bit for me. Think that'll hold? Close. OK, now up. Real slow, real slow. Keep coming up. Got to do this fast, guys. OK, hold it, hold it. One, One two, two, three. There we go. Now we're talking. All right, measurement. A lot of people think about the, the dangers of dealing with these sharks, and there's certainly dangers. Joe Cottlefin has been bitten. A rolling boat, rough seas. You're working with scalpels and hypodermic needles, wow. taking blood samples and bile samples. Working on the deck of a research ship it can be quite dangerous. We try to get her in within about two to three minutes, but they're pretty tough animals. They say that once you look into the eye of a six gill, you'll never forget it. All right, let's get her overboard. The team is now in a race to get the shark back in the water as soon as possible. Out with the A-frame. Go ahead and let her down a little bit. Yeah, just about. Down. Okay, hold what you got. Look at her. She's gonna swim right off. For the next 18 days, Dean Grubbs and his crew of scientists will endure harsh weather conditions, lack of sleep, 
and backbreaking work. For those of us who are field biologists, this is what we live for, what we work for, all the time spent behind the computer, writing grant proposals, analyzing data, writing papers. We only do that really so we can get out here on the boat and uh, collect data at, at sea. I think to a normal person, they think we're crazy wanting to come out here and stay up for hours on end on a rolling ship. But this is like space exploration to fish biologists, being able to do work in the deep sea like this and, and see potentially new species to, to science and a lot of different species that very few people have ever seen. After years of gathering information about deep ocean fish, Dean Grubbs is cautiously optimistic. This has become the largest survey of deep water sharks ever conducted. What we've seen is that the toxicological effects of the oil actually kept ramping up for two and a half or three years after the spill and then started coming back down. I'm cautiously optimistic that the effects of the spill were relatively short-lived and moderate, but these animals grow so slowly, they reproduce slowly, so it takes a long time for these effects to work their way up the food chain to these really slow-growing animals, and uh, I think it'll take at least 10 years before we're able to see if they're recovering. <laughs> 